You're listening to Corb Conversations on the Business of Brands with Sudeep Chawla and Sharavana Raghavan. Hey Sudeep, how are you? I am good, Sharan. How are you? I am good. I'm excited because today is my chance to ask you a lot of questions. <laughs> yes, it is. So, Go what ahead. are we talking about today? Okay, so today we will talk about uh, uh, a topic called branding without marketing. Okay. Uh, we will talk about these two terms, branding and marketing, which are often used interchangeably by some people. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk a little bit in detail about what's the difference between the two. Uh, okay. Which one are we suggesting all the you know small t- small business owners and startups to do from the very start? Mm-hmm. And uh, how can they do it uh, when they are even you know building their business? Wow, awesome! Because like you said, it's being used in conjunction with each other. They're using re- replaceably almost. But the fact that both of us are in branding and marketing and they're saying branding without marketing, well, I'm curious as to what we say. So can we start off by saying what is branding first and what is not at all? Okay. Uh, let me try and define branding according sure. to me. And I'm not using a bookish definition here. Perfect. I'll say branding is a sum total mm-hmm. of who you are. Okay. Yeah. So therefore, your intrinsic beliefs, your mission, your personality and their articulation, whatever you are inside and whatever you are outside, all of that put together and its articulation. And therefore, in one line, if I say it is therefore a promise package to your consumers. Okay. Yeah. So... Whatever you promise to your consumers inside and outside, that promise is branding. Can you go deeper on the inside and outside? Yeah. So, for example, uh, when you start a business, you start the business with some intrinsic beliefs. You want to improve something. You want to counter something. You want to preserve something. And we will talk a little bit about this uh, because there are two or three, rather three ways of making meaning. And we will talk about how to, you know, what are those three buckets. But whatever those ways are, what, whichever way you think you are making meaning, that becomes your intrinsic belief. As a business, you believe in something. Yeah. And then, basis that belief, you make something your mission. Yeah. And now, to take that belief and mission forward, you have created a business. And therefore, there is a certain way in which you will interact with the world. And when I say the world, you will interact with your own employees, you will interact with your vendors, and you will obviously interact with your consumers. That frames your personality. So there is intrinsic belief, intrinsic mission that you have. And then there is a set of behaviors, attitudes, uh, or the manner in which you will behave. That becomes your personality. The sum total of these two, what is intrinsic to you and how you will behave with everybody else becomes branding. And therefore, that is the package uh, that you bring to the consumers. So, when you say it is for vendors and employees also, so I was more looking at branding without marketing facing the consumer. Yeah. Are you saying the culture of the company is intrinsic to the brand they build? Yes. Actually, one of the more ignored part of branding Mm -hmm. is the fact that because you have created a promise package you have to be consistent in that promise regardless of who you are facing and one of the more ignored stakeholders in that promise is your internal stakeholders when Mm -hmm. a business is starting you hardly have any consumers you don't have money to advertise about your business so therefore people around you are the first guys who should be talking about your belief who should be feeling your belief and the only way they will feel your belief is when you are able to tell it to them with the same amount of conviction and you are true to your inner conviction as well as your outer personality and hence According to me, branding starts from the time you f- make your company, when you start thinking about your company. It pervades through 
how you name your company how you talk about it to the very first person that you uh, talk with it pervades through all the interviews that you do your early stage employees that you hire how you treat them uh, how you how you talk with them and then how the collective of your company talks to everybody in the outside world so that is where branding starts from awesome and i'm smiling like a cheshire cat which people who are listening to this cannot see because you've landed on a prize question of mine which is i meet a lot of startup founders who say i want to do my branding later i want i'm i'm too early for branding and you just told me branding starts with the first conversation about the business so can you go deeper on that how soon must branding start and i think you cover a little bit of it with uh saying that it starts with a conversation it's not just about marketing it's about the culture but i'm going to have a, a rejoinder to this question to say how soon must branding start is one and for a startup founder uh, it is all about trying new things and trying different things before they land on what exactly the business should be about in fact today people yeah. are fig- figuring their business models even after the ipo yeah so in this kind of an environment when does branding start sure and how okay excellent question i think this should be of interest to a lot of the listeners that are hopefully listening to this po- podcast mm-hmm. let me first start by saying that when founders say i will do branding later i believe they mean that they will do marketing later and hence let me just try and pull apart branding and marketing yeah when i started i said branding is a sum total of promises that you make to the customers which are in form of your internal beliefs and missions and your outward personality marketing is sum total of what you do to communicate your branding or your beliefs etc yeah so these are two different things now branding is about who you are marketing is about telling it to others yeah now when you say that i want to do marketing later it is perfectly fair you want to make sure that you are juicing out your organic traffic first your referral traffic first and then you will go do marketing to people which are outside that zone and those are the ones who will then possibly get to experience your branding once they have exposed to your marketing yeah so let's return back to branding itself now branding as i say it's a sum total of belief and i will possibly therefore quote uh, guy kawasaki so i heard this uh, you know speech called art of the start uh, this was delivered back in 2006 in a forum of the indus entrepreneurs and uh, i possibly was exposed to it somewhere around that time but i really loved that speech if uh, all my listeners get this chance they should try and go to youtube and search for this we will possibly put it in the notes yeah so he speaks about uh, entrepreneurship in a in a number of ways but he talks about the fact that uh, any business when it starts it starts with creating some kind of meaning okay the the saying in the vc circle goes that if you create meaning you will create money but if you start out to create money you will fall into problems yeah so therefore and i know i have heard this from a lot of startup founders they have deep seated meaning in their hearts yeah right so he talks about creating meaning in two three ways mm-hmm. yeah the first way is that you want to create meaning by fighting some evil there is okay. something wrong in the society there is something wrong in what we are doing and you want to fight it second type of meaning is you want to fundamentally improve the quality of life of your consumers mm-hmm. and third type of meaning is you want to prevent the end of something good okay yeah so one of these three would be true for every startup every meaningful startup that you come across 
करेक्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू कैन थिंक ऑफ इट इन दिस मैनर इफ यू टॉक अबाउट किड्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल या नाउ वी नो दैट इंक्रीजिंगली स्क्रीन आर बिकमिंग अ फेयरली बिग पार्ट ऑफ देयर लाइफ एंड एवरी पेरेंट दैट यू स्पीक टू इज वरीड अबाउट दिस टूडे सो इफ देर इज अ स्टार्टअप विच बिलीव दैट प्लेइंग आउटसाइड इज ग्रेट या and therefore they want to prevent the end of something good they will talk about go outdoors do something with your time don't sit in front of screen etc etc and they'll do something about it mm-hmm. yeah uh, uh, surf excel has been on this when they say dag acche hain right their clear message is about go outside and play right they are preventing the end of something good right yeah similarly you know if you uh, let's talk about hindustan unilever brands only mm-hmm. uh red label hmm. for example talks about conversations mm-hmm. yeah and they talk about fighting some of the preconceived notions that the fa- that the society holds right yeah they form a uh, they formed a band with a bunch of eunuchs mm-hmm. called the six pack band etc mm-hmm. to fight the misconception that the society holds against them that would yeah. be fighting an evil fighting an evil perfect okay yeah. the third thing is fundamentally improving the quality of consumer's life talk about life boy mm-hmm. yeah no life boy has this fundamental mission of making sure that people are able to wash their hands and the washing of hands according to them in a lot of places prolongs the life of newborn kids right a lot of the newborn kids don't uh, stay beyond the age of 7 don't remain alive beyond the age of 7 because they suffer with measles and various other diseases because they don't wash hands right right and they're doing this work with a lot of villages i think in karnataka uh-huh. uh, to make sure that uh, the age the uh, the the average age of a infant or a kid prolongs hmm. just with the habit of washing their hands wow. so that is about fundamentally improving the quality of consumer life and there could be many toothpastes you know started off with a mission of saying that we want to make sure that people brush their teeth right and therefore the quality of life improves etc etc these three ways are wh- are which in which uh, you know a, a startup founder or a business owner fundamentally creates meaning now when you create a meaning that means that this is the fundamental belief in your heart right so that is where you start with so it, frankly it starts from the time when you have even not even conceived your business mm-hmm. but you are driven by solving for some problem right so the belief starts in your heart mm-hmm. then you start convincing people around it that this is a problem worth solving mm-hmm. and there's a big business opportunity there what you're doing is therefore you're building the belief set around your brand right yeah then you start giving it a name and whenever you then talk to investors you talk to early stage employees you convince them by talking to them about the problem you are solving mm-hmm. and the bigness of the opportunity right. both these are part of your fundamental belief and hence you have to recognize that you have already started investing into your brand wow all marketing asks you to do or the subject of marketing asks you to do is now that you have this belief you hold this belief in the deepest core of your heart mm-hmm. make sure that all elements of your business talk about it exhibit it wow yeah awesome. and therefore to your question charan mm-hmm. right from the very moment that a startup founder gets inspired to create something mm-hmm. the branding process starts germination yes the sooner you realize that these are where the seeds of my brand are coming from mm-hmm. the better you will be able to translate it into every element of your startup or your company right right makes so much sense you're listening to cob conversations on the business of brands your hosts are sudeep chavla marketing practitioner business leader and educator to advertising and marketing professionals and sharavana raghavan of vitril innovations consultants to consumer facing brands and businesses for more information go to copcast.net if you find this podcast helpful please help us by telling your friends and rating us
now that we've defined branding as such, now you you mentioned where it starts, right? From the time the founder thinks of the company. Yeah. So what else makes branding? I, I are we talking about the four P's or five P's or or what is it that we're talking about when we say the yeah, other elements of branding? Sure. So I don't frankly have a framework to it. Uh, right. I, I Come on, dis- that's what we all exist on. Everybody makes frameworks. I dislike frameworks. <laughs> and I, I would say that, uh, you know, anything and everything mm-hmm. which touches your internal and external customers becomes a part of branding. And, you know, this is the principle. Let me tell you the application of the principle. Okay. So when you're designing your products or your service, mm-hmm. yeah, how you design that product or a service becomes branding. Yeah. Okay. When you're uh, the shape or the size or the packaging or the claims that you make for it, mm-hmm. when you design your website, which is your interface to the outside world, that becomes part of the branding. And then you go beyond it. Yeah. Any operation, anything which touches customer, that is what we spoke about. So customer service operations, your call center. Right. That becomes part of branding. Right. Your HR interviews, how you're treating people when they are coming in. What is it that you're testing them on? What core belief you want them to have before they join your company? What should they be driven by? Those are all parts of branding. Okay. Yeah. So you have to think about in, internal as well as external stakeholders. Yeah. Oh, okay. It is all about when you're early stage business. Honestly, you want more than enough people talking about your mission to the world. Right. And my question to all the startup founders or the small business owners out there, if your employees, if your early employees and your early customers or your early vendors don't talk about your mission, then who will? Hmm. Yeah. So therefore, you have to find multiplier in every person that you meet. Right. And the multiplication will only happen if you repeat your beliefs, if you repeat your message with the right amount of consistency and frequency, which is your promise. So therefore, your when you keep repeating your belief mm-hmm. with consistency and frequency, that becomes your brand promise. And that is the branding. Uh, right. That, I mean, that's a very, very different perspective, but it kind of makes a lot of common sense. Yeah. And yeah. just one point on what you said, Shadeep. You said you should include this in your hiring philosophy. Yeah. So is it important that every employee of the company must be aligned to the values or the or the purpose of the company? Is there no way we can work around that? I would possibly think so. Regardless okay. of how large a company becomes. Mm-hmm you are finally hiring an employee to make sure that they make a long-term career Mm -hmm. and they are able to add significant value to the company. Right. And one possible way, the only possible way is that the values of the employee and the values of the organization are very closely knitted to each other. Mm -hmm. They might not articulate the value in same manner. Mm -hmm. And therefore, over a period of time, this is how culture pervades. The mm-hmm. culture of an organization tends to uh, bring that their intrinsic value to the forefront. But they should have that value. Yeah. So if you're a business, for example, some time back I was hearing to this, listening to this uh, um, uh, YouTube uh, video mm-hmm. of conversation between uh, Shantanu Deshpande of uh, the Bombay Shaving Company. Mm-hmm. And Ashish Mohapatra of Off Business. Okay. And he speaks about, Ashish speaks about the fact that their business Mm -hmm. operates in an environment where they are talking about industrial uh, goods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Where they are talking to suppliers as well as vendors of a fairly large size. Okay. And therefore, the business really, really needs to fight hard. And therefore, they need people who are able to fight hard. And therefore, one of their core uh, hiring philosophies is to shortlist people who have not had it easy in life. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So either they have had some kind of, you know, parental bereavement, Mm -hmm. 
or they have had some kind of setbacks in their personal life or they are from smaller towns something which qualifies for the fact that they have had to fight to reach where they are today wow yeah so i was and you know it it kind of strengthened my belief that you should know what your business needs and what your business believes mm-hmm. and you have to find a way to uh, judge that coherence in the candidate that you are meeting right right that's amazing that's amazing you you say that so i know you might have a few other points to make but i'm going to ponder on this a little bit longer yeah say when i get it it works for startups that way so just for a moment if you want to expand out to say now a lot of startups are also acquiring other brands mm. now what happens in a house of brands so mm. there could be brands that have say conflicting cultures or different cultures not necessarily conflicting but let's just say they're different cultures and what does a company do then is that a common denominator hmm so fair so i uh, i've had that experience where i'm working today in pidilai mm-hmm. and from that experience i can say that yes there is a common denominator okay and needn't be the minimum common denominator per se all right no common yeah. minimum programs here no common minimum <laughs> programs uh, there is some basic culture on which every company thrives not mm-hmm. just survives but thrives mm-hmm. and that culture surely would pervade across house of brands mm. its uh, application its manifestation might be different for different brands right so for a hindustan unilever mm. and the personality of an axe right is very different from personality of a life boy absolutely but hindustan unilever would have certain understanding of the kind of individuals who will succeed in the company right who will ultimately possibly handle one of the two brands or they might get to handle both right right yeah. i think i think that makes a lot of sense as in having a common denominator but not necessarily the lowest common denominator so that you yeah. maximize the potential in working together i think yeah. that's that's the brilliant So okay so can i kind of push you now into the space of the startup world without marketing you said mm. you said consistency mm. and you said the word compounding earlier mm. so how does that work in a world where we are all chasing ROAS every day and mm. lead generation every day so how does this work hmm Okay I think we alluded to it in our last conversation as well mm-hmm. uh but first let's talk about repetition and compounding okay yeah you would found find that brands which have built themselves some amount of customer franchise mm-hmm. are recognized by the repeated messages that they've been able to say over and over again okay yeah so that consistency of repetition leads to recognition is a simple fact fair and you would fair. find this across history yeah Agreed. all great leaders their ideas and their articulation doesn't change right they will talk about the same thing over and over and over again right so that's clear now what happens is that uh, once you start repeating mm-hmm. which means the message keeps solidifying right yeah so therefore that is what i call as compounding interest which means mm-hmm. even in roas terms mm-hmm. if you are doing your branding right and you are even running your performance marketing campaigns with the right amount of marketing content mm-hmm. your roas of every successive campaign should keep becoming better why okay. because with every set of campaign you have strengthened certain beliefs in your loyalists mm-hmm. and you have created some minimum belief in your trialists mm-hmm. and within a finite set of consumers therefore you are you are seeing a step jump every time you do a performance marketing campaign you strengthen the belief of somebody who was exposed to your beliefs earlier mm-hmm. and you create some new beliefs in certain new trialists who have just been exposed to you and hence your uh, you know return on 
एडवर्टाइजिंग स्पेंड्स और ए कॉस और वट एवर यू कॉल इट दैट शुड कीप बिकमिंग बेटर एवरी टाइम यू डू इट ओके सो it might be a bit of a stretch maybe i'm summarizing it wrong so correct me mm. Mm. your culture and how you run the company eventually has an impact on the return on ad spend you get when you do the marketing eventually yeah i would say so yes so it is not a summarization but it is actually a excellent way of you know forcing anybody in the startup world to think about how they are running their business wow yeah so today even before you get to a cos or uh, your ROAS. ROAS, mm-hmm. even before you start spending mm-hmm. you need enough and more people talking about you your belief your business hmm. a lot of them will tend to be your first customers your first investors and your employees right that is where your roa start is starts from they form the first step of the steps that we were talking about they form the first set of people who are going and converting your first 10 20 30 40 consumers right yeah so i i i would say it is not a stretch but yes uh, your employees the way you build your company etc is a significant determinant of how well you will do on roas or ecos etc later in your journey that's amazing that's amazing so let me kind of go back to the founder itself sudeep mm, mm. now i keep going back to saying that the founder never really has the entire picture when they start mm. and a lot of the founders i meet today are ones who started very young and with the infusion of a little bit of capital Mm. they kind of start learning how to behave and how to set the culture how to set the tone in the environment they building mm. so are they allowed to kind of iterate as they go along or is is it set in stone the moment they they begin how does this work mm. so let's separate two things out mm-hmm. yeah uh, whenever a startup founder thinks about a problem to solve they have their intrinsic beliefs in place right they might not understand how to create a great culture or how to create hr in their company mm-hmm. but those beliefs are right there in their heart okay. yeah so therefore their articulation of beliefs and the way their company is creating the meaning and therefore what the brand stands for is very clear mm-hmm. so over a period of time the more they articulate it to people the more their brand their purpose becomes clearer to them they they start finding the right articulation where they can explain it with minimum number of words used right yeah right so therefore at one end the articulation keeps becoming better and more effective right now number 2 is there is lots of other layers around the articulation to build a company to build a culture to make sure that everybody is talking about True. it yeah so you will possibly go through a number of iterations mm-hmm. to build the right kind of company the right kind of layers and in fact that also keeps changing uh, by the size of the company or the time that has elapsed mm-hmm. in your startup journey mm-hmm. so that is a forever changing environment okay what will hopefully not change is your core belief or the right. reason you started right yeah right so in in the iteration it can be a little hard to say what is my core belief and what am i flexible on so mm. whose inputs matter more in this evolution if i can put call it that mm. and when you say whose do you have as a different choices stakeholders in, in the system you have your employees you have your customers you have your investors you have family at home so a family might or may not completely the other values of the company or building i'm i'm, I'm just hypothesizing here so yeah. there are some things i can and cannot change from from what you say hmm. so who do i learn from whose inputs matter more in the evolution so again uh, just from the point of view of core beliefs mm-hmm. core beliefs is something that you've started framing very very early in your journey mm-hmm. and hopefully you've had enough repetitions in front of your family friends 
initial customers, consumers, investors, etc. So that tells you that your belief is right, your articulation is perfect. Right. So I think that is something that you don't need to change. There will be a lot of influence that might come your way and you might be forced to rethink. Mm -hmm. And that rethink usually tends to make the articulation even sharper. Mm -hmm. So that is something that should happen. The natural evolution of your core belief should happen. Okay. With regards to building the company, culture, etc., obviously one should be open to inputs from all kinds of qualified sources. And the reason I say qualified is that there is now sufficient uh, amount of qualified help available. Right. Either in form of, you know, consultants, either in form of uh, uh, other, you know, slightly more experienced people that you can hire. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of early stage VC firms mm -hmm. bring this capability on the board. Okay. Where they will, you know, have people consulting you on HR, consulting you on financial accounting, etc. Mm -hmm. To make sure that the founder remains focused on the problem that they are solving. Mm -hmm. While the organization skeleton can get created without necessar necessarily spending too much time from the founder's end on it. Oh, wow. So, without, without the founder's complete hand-holding, the organization can evolve into a culture that's linked to the core beliefs of the founder. I would not say that is possible. Mm -hmm. You can at least start, you can create a skeletal structure. Right, okay. But because the belief side starts from the interviews itself, mm -hmm. the founder would have to influence every person who is kind of bringing new employees into the system mm -hmm. to make sure that they are using the same sieve, they are using the same principles to evaluate that he or she would have. Right, right. Yeah. Right. So... If uh, I can, I'm, I'm towards the end of my questions here, but I'm going to ask a shortcut question, which I love. Yeah. So having been used to all the consumer testing we've done, hmm. is there a way an organization or a startup founder hmm. can figure out what kind of a brand to build by testing hmm. it? Oh, yes. See, since we said that there are a number of uh, ways in which your brand uh, or your brand purpose pervades mm -hmm. all of this is testable okay finally everybody has to recognize their brand is in service of the consumer mm -hmm. so therefore the one person they should go and test with or talk with is consumer so therefore if your brand purpose is in form of a you know a logo or a slogan or a website mm -hmm. yeah all of that is testable yeah you t go right. and talk to consumer they will give you the right uh, feedback right. Yeah? Right, right if you for example i'll i'll possibly give a give an example here that many of our listeners might be able to relate to mm -hmm. i'm a deep admirer of this business called the whole truth right yeah uh, uh, the ceo is shashank mehta mm -hmm. so he started this journey by writing about fitness right yeah, and I think the content was called Fit Shit at that point in time. Yeah. Yeah. And that is how he evolved. And he said that just writing is not enough. There is sufficient misinformation in the world, and therefore I need to do something about it. Wow. Yeah. And I would invite all the listeners to go to his website, which mm -hmm. is thewholetruth.com, mm -hmm. and just see the power of branding. Mm -hmm. This belief that consumer doesn't need to be lied to and we need to be completely honest with the consumer mm -hmm. pervades throughout the website hmm. yeah okay. just look at how they you know how they show their chocolates the kind of packaging they have they have only three or four contents in every chocolate nothing else just three wow. or four things wow no asterisk uh -huh. no hidden remarks no scientific language no chemicals brilliant yeah look at their packaging look at their products mm -hmm. look at the innovation choices that they make yeah look at their website design they have put their chocolate making procedure on the website right yeah and wow. sharon you and me both have worked in a chocolate <laughs> company yeah the chocolate making procedure used to be something very which was very sacrosanct absolutely yeah yeah in everything that they write mm -hmm. they invite participation from the consumer because they said we are on this mission wow so everything about what they do 
translates into a mission and then they are asking you to become a part of that mission wow yeah this is almost Some in more lines things. of this b corp setup that's yeah. going around right a yeah, lot of yeah. transparency and yeah, yeah. so you go the there and you will find so many there are two three more things that i would want to talk about their business mm-hmm. they have these women who sit and make these chocolates yeah oh okay. they call them thais okay that's so they sweet. have this section called meet the thais oh so that's the kind of transparency they have so you will be able to see people who are making your chocolate they have a 3d tour of their factory so they have nothing to hide wow yeah, yeah i Not remember j- there was a post about them going off instagram recently yeah right? yeah well, what is that about so you know they found that instagram was not working for them it was not giving As them the not, kind of returns marketing and returns marketing front yeah the okay. ecos or whatever ros was not mm-hmm. working mm-hmm. and therefore they went off instagram but they realized that uh, a lot of the people a lot of their consumers are on instagram and they are going to miss mm-hmm. seeing the whole truth mm-hmm. and therefore they put out a full page uh, full post notification about it being oh. very transparent that instagram doesn't work for us and therefore we are going off instagram <laughs> yeah and it was again the whole truth wow yeah and you know uh, it's just that when you really really believe in something you don't just stop at doing one thing so this guy has made a product mm-hmm. right he's selling that product now right. now he has something called the whole truth academy okay where he, there is video content about nutrition Oh, then wow. he has a truth be told newsletter <laughs> then he has the whole truth project podcast wow yeah so it it just goes on and on you look at everything that they do they were recruiting influencers some time back now nobody recruits influencers you pay influencers and get your job done yes <laughs> right a lot of the startup founders are there almost as expensive as celebrities that we can hire yeah yeah that's the that's the whole problem influencers are trying to be celebrities the reason influencers became big because people were tired of celebrities right yeah so you can these days a lot of the influencers are very open to being influenced <laughs> unfortunately yeah <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, um, the whole truth mm-hmm. ran this marketing program mm mm-hmm. to recruit influencers and it clearly put out and say we don't want to influence you if you genuinely believe in this mission please come and meet us and they call them the whole truth sayers wow yeah you are not influencers you are the whole truth sayers so come and talk to us they had some 120 people applying to them they finally shortlisted 30 mhm yeah. Wow. and those are the guys that they are working with so there is also an influencer selection program the actual recruitment of influencers influencers oh, wow so oh. you were you were talking about recruiting employees mm-hmm. here is an example of somebody recruiting influencers wow leave the employees beautiful yeah so that all so now what happens is i am talking with the possibly some amount of belief about his mission mm mm-hmm. yeah similarly many of their customers are a lot of his influencers are right this is branding wow this is branding which translates into free marketing a lot of people talk about you right you are not spending money right yeah and why am i talking about him because i have seen consistency of messaging consistency of promise in everything that his company does brilliant brilliant that's a that, that's a lovely note to close this on sleep so i'm i'm going to sum up what you said it's been it's been like knowledge bombs all through <laughs> so you basically said branding is not necessarily linked to marketing hmm. and when startup founders say it's too early for branding they actually mean i'm too early for marketing correct and when they start their business even when the business idea forms in their head they are already creating a brand correct and the advent of the branding that they do is how they let this germination of the brand idea seep into the organization and its employees and is almost used as a, used as a filter for the kind of people who join the organization correct and that then is all primed up to go meet the consumer even outside of marketing across every other touch point that they can go through with the brand true wow I think that's good that's a brilliant way to put things up. <laughs> Thank you so much for putting that together. Thank you for the opportunity share. Thank you 
for listening to Corp Conversations on the Business of Brands with Sudeep Chawla and Sharavana Raghavan. Subscribe and learn more at copcast.net. That's C O B B C A S T dot net.